One of the things that you should be able to do as a high school student is know how to do long division. Most of the time you will be allowed to use a calculator or even a basic calculator to do your basic calculations like division, but there might be occasions where you'll need to quickly do some long division, so I want to make this video available if you need a quick review. First of all, we need to discuss some vocabulary. When you're doing a basic division problem like 10 divided by 5, uh, the number that's being divided is referred to as the dividend, and the number that is dividing it is referred to as the divisor. When you set up a long division problem, you'll use the long division symbol or long division bracket, and you'll put the divisor on the outside or on the left of the bar, and you'll put the dividend underneath the symbol or underneath the bar. So that's the basic setup for a long division problem. There are several steps involved with long division, and I want to review those steps with you. When you first start, you'll set it up according to what I just said, and then you'll do division to start with. If there is any leftover numbers, you'll simply ignore them at the beginning. After you do your division, ignoring any remainders or any leftovers, the next step will be to do multiplication. After you multiply, you'll need to subtract any leftovers, and if there are any remaining digits, you'll need to bring them down. Once you've brought down any remaining digits, you'll need to repeat this process until the process ends. Let me illustrate with some examples. Let's keep our first example of doing 5 divided by, excuse me, 10 divided by 5. Most people can do this problem without performing long division, but I want to illustrate the process so that you can get practice with the four steps on an easy one. Most people know that two fives make up a 10, so we want to think about how many times does 5 go into 10. That's kind of your first step in your thinking when you're doing long division. How many times does the outside number go into the inside number? In this case, 5 goes into 10 two times. That 2, because it goes into the entire number, is going to go above the 0. It is important that you line up your numbers correctly in order to keep track of where you are. So 5 goes into 10 two times, the 2 goes above the 0. We've done our division step. Now, to finish the process, we keep going to step number 2, multiplication. This is where you take the number that you just wrote and you multiply it by the divisor. So 2 times 5 is 10. We write that underneath what we just did. Now we're on to step number 3. We're going to do subtraction. We subtract the top number from the number we just wrote. In this case, we get a 0. You can write the 0 if you'd like, or you may skip it. As soon as you get to a 0, you are completed, as long as there's no other digits for you to bring down. So in this case, because we got a 0 after the subtraction step, we don't need to bring down any further digits, so we are able to be done on this problem. So if we had a number to bring down, we would do that, and then we would repeat the process. But this problem is finished because we ended up with a 0. So our answer to 10 divided by 5 is 2. Let's try a few more that are a little bit more complex. How about a number like 11 divided by 5? Now, as we just practiced, we know that 5 goes into 10 two times. 5 doesn't go into 11 evenly. So we, go, we pick the number that goes into it as closely as possible, ignoring any leftovers. So in this case, we'd say 5 goes into 11 two times. Now we get into multiplication. 2 times 5 is 10. Now we subtract, and we see that there is 1 left over. Because 5 doesn't go into 1, we need to bring down a, a next digit. Since we don't have a next digit, we indicate that the number 11 is the same as the number 11.0. And so we bring down an x to 0. We include our decimal that we just put after the 11. We include that after the 2 as well. So it's almost like we bring up the decimal. Because now anything that we do is going to be past the decimal point or in the tenths place. So we put the decimal after the 11 because that's the same as that number. We brought the decimal up above it so that it lines up vertically. We don't need to bring it down because we're still uh, pretending that this number is what we're going to be dividing into. So now it's almost like we've started over, and now we're doing 5 goes into 10 how many times? So we're in the repeat step right now. We're saying 5 goes into 10 how many times? It goes in twice. That goes above the number that we just brought down. Now we double check again, and we're on step number 2, multiplication. 2 times 5 is 10. Now we do subtraction, and we end up with 0, so we are done. 
So when you say 11 divided by 5 is what? You'd say that 11 divided by 5 is 2.2. Let's keep going and try some more challenging problems. Let's try a longer one like 190 divided by 16. So as we go through the process, we want to think how many times does 16 go into 19? 16 goes into 19 one time. There are some leftovers there, but we're not going to worry about that. Now we're into multiplication. 1 times 16 is 16. Now we subtract. And when we subtract, we get 9 minus 6 is 3. We bring down the next digit. In this case, it's a 0. 6 goes into 30 only one time, because if we had it go in there twice, it would be larger than the number 30. So again, 16 goes into 30 one time. Multiplication, 1 times 16 is 16. Subtract. And when you subtract there, you might have to do a little bit of calculating on your own, or if you had a calculator, you could go ahead and do that. I know here that we're going to borrow from the 3 to make a 2, and 10 minus 6 is 4, 2 minus 1 is 1. Now at this point, it feels like we should maybe be done. We could say that 190 divided by 16 is 11 with the remainder of 14. That is one way to do the problem. However, if you're trying to do this problem in decimal form, you would need to keep going, and I'm going to show you how to do that next. So you could quit right here and say 11 with remainder 14. If you're trying to do a decimal point, you'd need to keep going. At this point, we would need to put in the decimal point after the 190 and add in a 0. As soon as we introduce that decimal here, it needs to slide up as well. And then we can bring that zero down. And now it's almost like we're starting the problem all over again. 16 goes into 140 how many times? Well, I don't know. Uh, so this is where I'm going to have to pause for a moment and think it through a little bit and use some logical reasoning. I know that 16 times 10 is going to be 160. And so I'm going to see what 16 times 9 is, and I'm just going to do a little scratch work here off to the side. So I know that 16 times 10 is too big. I'm going to see if 16 times 9 is too big as well. I'm guessing that it might be, but I want to double check it because I don't know for sure. So I'm going to quickly figure out 16 times 9 off to the side. 16 times 9, or 9 times 6 is 54. 54 and carry the 5. 9 times 1 is 9, plus 5 is 14. So I can clearly see that 9 sixteens is going to be 144, and that's going to be too much. So that leads me to believe that 16 goes into 140 eight times. So 8 is my number. Now I have to do 8 times 16. And if I don't know that, I could either minus 16 from what I just got, or I could redo 16 times 8. I know that 16 times 8 is going to be 128, because I quickly did my subtraction here. So you've got two different ways you could have figured that out. 16 times 8 is 128. Now I'm going to subtract. When I subtract here, again, you could do borrowing and your basic subtraction steps here, but I know this one is going to be 112. And I, don't, I know that 16 doesn't go into 12, so I'm going to need to bring down another 0. Now, 16 goes into 120. Uh, I know that 8 sixteens is 128. So I know that 7 is going to be the right number here. So 7 has to be the number. 7 times 16, again, if I didn't know that, I would just do the quick figuring off to the side here. I do know it, however, because it's going to be 16 less than 128, so I know that that's 112. When I subtract here, I know that the number here is 8. Bring down another 0. And this time I know that 16 goes into 80 evenly. It goes in 5 times. 5 times 16 is 80, so now when I subtract, I know that I get my 0, so I know that I have completed the problem. Long division is a difficult process, and it is something that you will need to practice. It's also very helpful if you know your math facts, or if you're very quick at doing your multiplication so that you can calculate these bigger numbers like we did on this one.